Yeah, where is that lazy sack? What's keeping him? All right. Sorry I'm late, guys. Sorry I'm late. All right, what are we discussing today? Well, we were planning on talking about the boiler system. The pros and the cons. What is this, a podcast? What's with the microphone? No, it's, it's not a podcast. Just ignore the microphone. Yeah, what's the deal with the microphone? Is this a podcast? Man, just ignore the microphone. Pretend it doesn't exist. Right? So the initial deliberation that we had was, uh, where do we put this thing? Because most of them, they get put outside where it's freaking cold. Yeah, what's wrong with that? Didn't you hear them? It's cold, dumbass. Yeah. Yeah, it's cold. So uh, we're going to take that into account. It's cold in the winter. It's when we need this thing. Some of these old buggers... They just put them outside, some freaking plop it in the... I mean, yeah, they're a fire hazard. Fire hazard. So anyway, we could stick it outside, enjoy the cold, and this, that, and the other. Um, but we're not going to do that. So we decided on building a shop for it. It's a great idea. That was my idea, and it, it was great. So here we got uh, the cement going in, into the forms, uh, trawling her away and stuff. It's all looking pretty good. There in the center of the cement, you can see that there's some metal. That's the floor for the boiler system. And then next thing you know, the cement was dry and we started building. Uh, this is back before we had cameras and stuff, so we uh, didn't get any video of that or pictures. Yeah, but we hammered and conquered and blah, 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 blah. Uh, raised some walls, nailed them together, used some screws and level, and uh, up the walls went. Next thing you know, rafters are going up, building's done. Oh, who am I kidding? There's no photos available because they're... There's no cameras back then. Anyway, here it is. That's the inside and uh, the other side of the inside. There's only two sides. And the building's relatively done. And that's where the boiler went in. Another key feature to this is uh, the catwalk on the roof. They could easily be up there in the wintertime cleaning the chimney. See the catwalk there. Chimney's sticking out. We got some uh, exhaust ports. Now we started building the boiler. Uh, Used some uh, old scrap metal, turned it into brand new stuff. And there's a bit of a blurry picture of it. Remember, uh, we didn't have cameras back then. So this is as clear as they got. And there it is, kind of all boxy-like, uh, but looks ugly. So, oh, there's the chamber. Chamber looks pretty good. And some fittings and parts and stuff that we, uh, we probably didn't use those. So, covered it in some stucco wire and uh, started laying her, oh, we even painted some of it. Oh, didn't remember that. Anyway, covered it in stucco wire and uh, started applying stucco. Stuccoed the crap out of it until it was... Uh, relatively stuck out and uh, yeah threw some federal white on at the end made it all nice and white and gleaming clean like but uh, it wouldn't stay that way so there's the door the door didn't get stuck out it uh, just got some insulation a thin coat of stucco on the outside and that's pretty much the finished product after it was done so next thing you know we lit her up and uh, yeah, you could get a big fire going all up in there. Even had an ominous glow on occasion. But then after a while, what happened is uh, this side wall here, it uh, started having issues where it would basically, the fire would rip it apart and uh, tear a big hole in it. So we'd remove the stucco and weld it shut, put the stucco back, and then it would do it again and again and again. So then we came up with plan B, deliberated on what, the how, the who, the when, and uh, came up with a plan where we were going to rebuild this sucker with water jackets. So once the plan got figured out, we basically took the whole two top tanks of the boiler off and rolled them over on pipes along a track on top of some pallets, got the whole top section of the boiler out of the way, and then we removed these crappy walls that kept ripping open. And the floor. We took out the cement and everything. We made a hole, dug a pit, uh, filled it full of rebar, a sump pit, a whole bunch of uh, rebar in there, and some uh, tabs on the side where the boiler is going to sit on. The floor is going to be a water jacket. The sides are going to be a water jacket. This is what it's going to sit on. So, filled it up with cement, there she is done, now we've got to pull the forms off, 
Once the forms are off, you can see those tabs sticking out the side. They end up being where the boiler sits. Lines up at the floor. Here's the first piece going in the floor. And then the two walls in the back side. The next thing would be the two tanks going back on top. There they are. And we could remove the track and all the pallets. Start welding everything back together. Hook the chimney back up. Had to do some repairs in the old tanks. Here's the door going together. And the door is going to have two vents from the top to the bottom where they open on top and they let the air in down through the bottom. And uh, that's how it gets air inside the chamber. There's the door kind of chained on temporarily. Got to build some tracks for that. Here the chimney's hooked back up. The door gets pulled upward across there through some tubes down the back side. This is the counterweight that the door is going to be hooked up to because it's going to be freaking heavy filled with water. So there it is full, filled with cement. So when that counterweight gets pulled down here, the door goes up. So this thing has like a U shape so it can wrap around the chimney. And uh, yeah, as the door goes up, counterweight goes down or vice versa. Counterweight goes up, door goes down. So the door rides on a track that's basically a garage door track. Two separate tracks to open the door properly uh, so it creates kind of a bent like piece of ductwork. There the shroud is built around so when the door goes up it goes into that shroud. And it helps to direct the smoke up in through the shroud. Okay, now we're going to go over the pros and the cons. So let's go over the pros first. Free heat! Free heat! Where we're heating somewhere around 7,000 square feet of indoor space. Not absolutely free. I, we had to build all that crap in order for it to be free. Free, free is a relative term used by the ancient Greeks uh, who were idiots. Just like you guys. Whoa, calm down. A everybody's going to get a chance to yell. Damn it. Well, it also gave us the ability to stick it to the gas man. Or, or the, uh, the electric Tesla gurus. If you heat with electric anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are all great pros there, guys. Great pros. But one of the better pros that we got is uh, we got wood for free delivered. Delivery is not free. What are you talking about? Well, it was for us. You don't remember? It was free and delivered. And the next best thing uh, for the pros was the fact that uh, we weren't going to handle all this wood. That's work. And we don't do work like exercise. Yeah. Yeah, exercise sucks. Yeah, all the work and sweating. That's not good. What do you, what do you guys have against exercise? I mean, it's like good for you. Nothing wrong with it. Exercise. There's a problem here. Exercise. No. No, no, no. There's nothing wrong with exercise. It's just the whole that we didn't want to do it part. Okay, next. Uh, we're not putting this crap outside. You guys already know that. We're not putting this crap outside. Which I still don't get. Why? Why does it have to be inside? It's nice outside. Even in the middle of winter. I don't know what the hell planet you're from. But you're an idiot. It's cold out there. It's like minus two today. It's, it's nothing. Guys, guys, let's keep it together. Let's keep it together. Come on. I'm trying to do a, trying to do a video here. Now, another thing that was a pro in my, uh, in our circumstance was that uh, we had the neighbor helping to feed this thing. So say you had some kind of appointment like, uh, oh, I don't know, a Christmas banquet that you had to be at. And uh, you didn't have time to feed this damn thing. Then uh, you just let the neighbor do it. Uh, that's all the pros we got. Um, if there's anything I miss, leave it down in the comment section. Um, so that we can read it. The cons! Oh, the cons. Don't even get me started with the cons. There's so many. What are you talking about, old man? There's no cons. This thing was great. It was the best thing I ever built. Keyword, me. Oh, hold on. All right, all right. Uh, let's go over these now. Number one, heat affecting the metal. Yeah, the heat was tearing this thing apart initially until we rebuilt it. So the heat affecting metal is something you should really take into account because the whole thing should be water jacketed. Hey, I am the best welder. Me and Miller over there, we have done some amazing Shiite. I am actually known 
as the best welder at 136 Street South. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, we got got some leaks, nevertheless. We, there was leaks in the damn thing. Uh, next thing is the smoke. I mean, yeah, the neighbor used the thing, but the neighbors hated the smoke. And so did the other neighbors and the other neighbors. I don't think any of the neighbors liked the smoke, because this thing smoked like a son of a bitch. So needless to say, the neighbors really didn't like us much at all. They absolutely hated me. I was a grumpy old man down the road. All because of that smoke. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Uh, th nobody hated me. Everybody liked me. That's because you're an idiot. Oh, oh hold on, guys. <laughs> let's, let's move on here. Let's move on. Uh, this thing was a fire hazard, and we put it in a building, an expensive building. So, yeah. What did you expect? There was a fire in it. Yeah, stupid fire hazard. Yeah, fire hazard sucked. Luckily, nothing ever burned down. So another problem or a con would be uh, power failure. If you have power failure, the boiler stops circulating water. You need a generator. Uh, what happens if it's in the middle of the night or you're at work? I mean, power failures could be detrimental. You don't even know what detrimental means. He thinks it means you're in debt and you're mental. Guys, come on. Come on. We're trying to give people some good information here. Uh, so if you're getting some good information out of this, uh, you feel like you want to punch me in the face, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Next con would be pump failure. Yeah, this thing was built on... Uh, Let's just say rust. Yeah, she was rusty all the time, inside and out. <laughs> she was rusty all the time, inside and out. So yeah, pumps failed. So there's that. Next thing would be, it could have a lot of blowback. What I mean by that is just an aggressive fire that doesn't want to stop burning even when you cut its oxygen. So what would happen is uh, you would just leave it alone for hours on end and it would creep its way up to temperature and then it would cut off the oxygen supply. And then if you'd go over into that shop, which I hardly ever did unless I had to plow snow or something, you would go in the shop and the whole thing would be covered in smoke, like a dense fog you cannot see through from one side of the shop to the other. That's how much smoke would be in there. So how often that happened? I don't know, but I saw it on occasion. <laughs> so that sucks. And another one would be another fire hazard, which would be the exhaust shroud, creosote buildup that would ignite from little sparkies going up there. So depending how your system is set up, that can also be a con. Another con, feeding the fire daily. If you're by yourself and you have no one to give you a hand, luckily it was me and my neighbor doing it together, who was also my brother, so I trusted him a little. And uh, yeah, it made it doable when you couldn't get out there. Say you're sick or you're stuck at work or something. You just couldn't get to feeding the baby and uh, feeding the boiler. And uh, yeah, at least you had some kind of backup. So take that kind of crap into account too. At the time, I didn't have a wife. <laughs> you didn't have a wife. <laughs> Loser. Hey, numbass. You were in that boat too. We've all been there. All right. Stop your crying. Okay, the last thing that's a con is insurance. Yeah, around here we only have one company that uh, insures boiler systems that are homemade. And, uh, well, let's just say, don't piss them off. All right, so like I said, if I missed anything, uh, leave your comments down in the comment section and we'll see if we can reply to them. Or maybe we haven't thought of them. Or hey, who knows? All right, that'll be the end of this podcast. I knew it was a podcast! Oh, you freaking idiots. I was built to last on the webs of a way that I could change the past. I'm all overachieving, now I'm doing all the gas. Now I'm still competing, and they break my glass, and this life's going. I wanna be the best in the game.